Okay, so this video is going to show how to create uh, a sun path diagram using Revit. We're going to export the sun path into Illustrator as a PDF and then work in Illustrator to clean it up and then add some graphics that we want. So I'm in Revit and uh, I have my 3D model open. This is the uh, sample project that loads with Revit. Um, what What's nice about this, they have a terrain, they have a topo uh, surface here that they've created. So um, there's other videos on, on how to create that, but you can go to topo surface. You could import a topo surface or you can create one in Revit. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this view, uh, we're gonna turn on the sun path, which is down here. So the little sun icon, we're going to say sun path on and you'll see a, a visualization of the sun um, with the cardinal directions uh, highlighted here and there's different settings so if you click on that sun icon again and go to sun settings you can change the type of uh, view you want so right now the location is for boston i'm going to just arbitrarily set this to Fraser Park, so I can click on that. If I just search for it, say Fraser Park, California, and so this will give us the the sun path at that location with its uh, coordinates. Okay, and so here on the left, you can choose: Do you want just a still? Kind of snapshot moment in time where the sun is going to be um, where you can then set the date set the time so we can set this for today at let's say 12 32 p.m um, and if you hit okay that'll give us that exact point in time so this is where the sun is going to be at 12 32 on march 1st Okay, and then if you want to edit that, go back to sun settings this way, or you can right click on it and you can go to sun settings here. You can change it from still to single day, where it'll show you kind of a, a period of time and kind of what the arc is going to look like. And you can drag these. This is all um, very responsive. So you can figure out, okay, at 2.30, the sun is going to be here. Um, so again, I can right-click on this, go to sun settings. Let's say I want a multi-day um, analysis. So uh, for the next 15 days, um, time from at, at 10.34, what the sun is going to do. So I can hit apply, and it'll give me that visualization here. So I can increase this further out, hit apply, and now it's kind of a, a longer uh, duration. And so you're seeing the, the sun path for not only March 1st, all the way up to March 24th. So that's how much uh, kind of movement there's gonna be from the sun in that one uh, period of time. Um, so some significant things, uh, the summer and winter, um, you may want to look at summer solstice, winter solstice. Um, you can do a summer solar study. So that's this is the region uh, where the sun is going to be during the summer. This is for Boston. Um, you can look at for winter. Notice how much lower the sun is uh, for winter versus summer. Right. So you can do these different studies. You can do a multi-day study. Um, and again, we can set the duration. It could be a month. Hit apply. So you can play with the date and time. And say we want to do a one year solar study. Okay, so that'll be the, the solar study for one year. I'm going to hit OK. And so there's actually, so this is in, um, right now I'm in hidden line. If I go into shaded view, this becomes uh, kind of a colors are shaded now. So we get an 
actual three-dimensional view of this thing. And so again, you can change the time. So let's say I want this to be 6 a.m. Oops. Sunrise hadn't happened yet, so 7 a.m. Okay, 8 a.m. and we see it here. So you can play with this. We can say 8 or uh, we'll say 5 p.m. 6 p.m. No. Nope. 4 p.m. Okay, so you can play with the the time of day, the the day of the week, all that. So let's say we we have a sun path that we're we're happy with, and we want to export this view. What we're going to do is uh, simply we'll just go to um, this PDF export at the top. You can also go to File Export PDF. Make sure your view is the, the view you want. Um, you can also uh, change the, you know, the, the sheet. You can say, I want this sheet to print, but I'm just going to use the current window, the one we're currently on, and choose the folder location. So I'll set this to my desktop, and I'll give it a name. We'll call it Sun, Sun Study. I'm going to have it fit to page, and I want to make sure vector is checked, so it'll be line work that it's exporting in that PDF. PDFs can also export raster images, which would be pixelated, which we don't want. We want vector so that we can change the line weights in Illustrator. So I'm going to hit export. This is taking a minute because I realized I am uh, in shaded view. Um, if I had set the view to um, hidden line, I would be able to open that up in Illustrator as well. So when you import that file, so if I were to go to File, Open, and I were to find, this is the original one that I opened. This is the that vector file. Yeah, it got it got confused because this is raster. But if I were to go to uh, hidden line view, and I were to go to file, export PDF, same thing. Put it on the desktop. Go to open. So this will give me um, all that line work that I just exported in Illustrator. So from here, you can select individual lines. One thing I like to do, um, if not, if everything is on the same layer here, right? If I, you can select all of the lines on that layer by clicking on this circle here. Um, but that's not really helpful when you want to change individual line weights. Um, so one thing you can do is you can select a line. You can go to select same stroke weight and it'll grab all of the lines in your file that are that line weight you can uh, copy and paste this onto another layer i can just individually change the line weight for those lines say i want to make them a bit heavier that's too heavy but that's that's what i would recommend if you want to change line weights uh, in illustrator and some have already come in with different colors. You can also select by color. So I can select this line, select same stroke color, and it'll grab all of the lines that are that color. So if you wanted to make, you know, make this a different color, you could do that. Let's fill. Okay, so Changing line weights can be pretty easy. Um, so change the line weights. Uh, you can change the fill if you guys want to do um, a live paint. So let's say you've diagrammed this um, and you want to do a live paint over a portion of your project. So you can select the line work that you want. Let's say it's this tree just because this house would be 
Yeah, let's try it. I'm going to do a live paint over this portion so I can fill in with color. So if I select the line work I want, make sure no text is selected. I select the line work, I can go to Object, Live Paint, and then Make. And it's going to calculate everything I need so that I can then um, go to the Fill tool. So it's called the Live Paint Bucket. You get there by holding down the icon of the Shape Builder tool. And you'll see Live Paint. From there, I can go in and I can um, I can fill various regions. So let's say you wanted to fill in this roof and you wanted to give that a gray fill. That's one way to do it. So I was just clicking and dragging. And again, I want this side to be a little darker, so I made that a darker gray. And I'm just clicking and dragging, and it's grabbing all of those regions. Okay, so if you wanted to do you know, more cartoon-like diagrams, this is an easy way to do that. So I can go, and again, I'm kind of highlighting various regions, and Illustrator is calculating that based on the line work I selected. It doesn't work over here because I didn't select that line work. But this can be an effective tool when you're um, creating diagrams in architecture and you want to create something that's more cartoon-like and not hyper-realistic. Okay. So this can be an effective tool in, in this process as well. All right, let's say we want to overlay this on top of an image. So let's say I go on um, Google Maps. I can try to orient this as best as possible. I'll just export this. I can screenshot it. I'm just going to screenshot this, copy the image, bring it into Illustrator, paste it. I'm going to make sure to paste it on this level. I'm going to lock this one. Control F to paste in place. Scale this. Once it's the size we want, I'm going to bring down the opacity just so I can see the line work a little better. So bring down the opacity here. And this is now kind of starting to look like a presentable diagram. I, personally, I would play with the line weights. This is really heavy for a line weight. So um, make sure that you've adjusted the line work and line weights before you um, start using live paint because Live paint is going to put everything on the same layer and it makes it a lot harder to control line weights. So make sure to adjust your line weights prior to live paint. So that's the tutorial on.